Hello, my name is Doria Araktinji. I'm from Jamestown High School, and my project is on the effects of distance, physical obstruction, and different frequency bands on Wi-Fi signal strength and speed. The coronavirus has caused billions of people to work from home, and schools have also had to resort to virtual learning, meaning that students are using technology in order to communicate with their teachers and complete their work. So in order for them to succeed in their education and work online, they rely on strong and fast Wi-Fi signals. Understanding what impacts the Wi-Fi signal and how to reach this optimal strength and speed will ultimately benefit students and other internet users. The experiment will be testing three things, frequency bands, distance, and physical obstructions, and how these impact the Wi-Fi signal. A little information on frequency bands, there are two different frequencies, 2.4 gigahertz and 5.0 gigahertz. And these frequency bands are radio wave frequencies that are responsible for data transmission in the wireless spectrum. So the first band is 2.4 gigahertz and it has 11 Wi-Fi channels within it. And a little note is that other household items use this frequency band as well, which could potentially cause interference. Whereas the 5 gigahertz has 45 Wi-Fi channels, which means less interference. So the essential question for this experiment is what impacts the Wi-Fi signal strength and speed the most? Basically, which frequency band results in better performance? Does a physical obstruction have any impact on the strength and speed? And what effect does the distance have on the Wi-Fi connection as well? Ultimately, the question is what is best for optimal Wi-Fi performance? So my hypothesis was that if there is a physical obstruction between the router and device, then the signal would be weaker than if there was no obstruction. Additionally, the six inch wall I predicted would have a greater impact on the Wi-Fi signal than the distance between the connected device and router. And then I also predicted that the five gigahertz frequency band would be stronger than the two 0.4 gigahertz at least at a shorter distance. So in this experiment, three different variables were tested. The frequency band, either 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz, the distance measured in 3 feet, 18 feet, as well as 36 feet, and then the presence of a physical obstruction. In this case, I used a six inch wall layered with paint, drywall, and wooden panels. This is a wall that can be found in a regular house. And then finally, the expected outcomes based on if my hypothesis was true was that if the physical obstruction reduced the Wi-Fi signal, then optimal performance could be achieved by either removing the obstruction or changing the position of the router or device. If indeed the 5 gigahertz frequency band ended up being stronger than the 2.4 gigahertz, then it would be optimal for having strong Wi-Fi signals in fast speed. Students and other internet users would benefit from connecting to a Wi-Fi that matches these circumstances. And now for my procedure. So firstly, the MacBook Pro was the device being used, and it was placed a specific distance away from the Apple Airport Extreme Base Station router. So as we can see in this photo here, here is the router being used, here is the specific distance being measured, and here is the MacBook device being connected. Um, secondly, I turned on the router and connected the device and then connected the router to the specific Wi-Fi network and chose a specific frequency band. So in the beginning, I started out with the 2.4 gigahertz. Then I ran a code that reported the measurements of data for each situation, specifically 60 measurements per one second. So here in the first image is a screenshot of the program that was used to run the code. 
um, to give the report of the measurements. So line three created the file. Line six here called an airport tool, which read the Wi-Fi data from the Mac OS system. The word grep here retrieved the specific data from the airport tool and specifically the SSID that was retrieved indicated either a 2.4 gigahertz or a 5 gigahertz frequency band. Um, the T-A here added the information to the file. And then in line 7, the date was added. In line 9, um, the time RSSI measured in decibel milliwatts, the noise measured in decibel milliwatts, and the transmission rate were repeated. Um, and then line 12 here states that the function will be repeated 60 times. Um, line 13 writes the date. And then line 15 uses the same airport tool to read and print the signal strength, noise level, and transmission rate. And then line 17 right here runs the function every one second. And line 19 started a new line every time the function ran. So here's a cropped screenshot of the, um, of the example output. So here we can see the SSID. This dash 5 indicates that it's a 5 gigahertz frequency. And then here the data that was given, here's the time. And then the RSSI measured in decibel milliwatts is the signal strength. The closer to zero means a stronger signal. And then this column here is the noise, also measured in decibel milliwatts. The closer it is to zero, the greater the noise level, which means the more interference there is. And then finally, the transmission rate was measured in megabits per second, and it is the connection speed from the router. For the second half of my procedure, I created a spreadsheet with the measurements that were taken from the code and I added signal to noise ratio otherwise known as SNR which is measured in decibels and then I also calculated the averages at the end so in these two images on the side we can see here this first one is a 5 gigahertz frequency band three feet no physical obstruction we can see the speed the RSSI we can see the noise or interference levels, and then this signal-to-noise ratio is calculated by subtracting the noise from the RSSI. And this signal-to-noise ratio gives us the strength of the Wi-Fi connection. And then lastly, the transmission rate measured in megabits per second is the speed of the Wi-Fi. And then at the end, it's not pictured here, but I did calculate the averages of each trial or measurement. Next, um, number six, the first five steps were repeated with the other frequency band. So I began with a 2.4 gigahertz band, meaning that I would switch over to the five. Then seven, the first six steps were repeated with the other distances. So I started out at 3 feet, and then I moved to 18 feet, and finally 36 feet, and then a physical obstruction was added to the 18 foot and 36 foot test as well. So there was a total of 8 trials, um, or 8 variables with the 60 measurements each. So then, finally, the data was analyzed and compared, and conclusions were drawn from the table and graph which were created. Not many physical risks were accompanied in this experiment, however proper safety precautions were taken at all times when dealing with the technology and materials. So finally the results. Um, here's a table that I created to help show these results. Um, we can see here this row is the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band, and then the bottom row is the 5 gigahertz. 
and then it was split up into the different variables. The first test we have was the three feet no obstruction, then the 18 feet with no obstruction, and then the six inch wall was added here in the 18 feet test, and then the 36 foot test also included the six inch wall. And then further into each test, there is a division between the signal noise ratio measured in decibels, which is the signal strength, and then there's the speed measured in megabits per second, which was the transmission rate. Um, and then here we can see the asterisk indicates the optimal numbers for each column. So throughout the table, the 2.4 gigahertz had the larger signal noise ratio which is better for strength, while the 5 gigahertz had optimal speed the whole time. After the data was collected, I also created a graph. So here first, the first measurement is the signal noise ratio, which shows the Wi-Fi signal strength. So first for the 3 foot, we can see that the 2.4 gigahertz started out stronger and then here quickly we can see both frequency bands decreased the strength as the distance increased and then when a physical obstruction was added both de decreased as well however the 2.4 gigahertz did not weaken as much as the 5 gigahertz did and then once distance increased as well um, both signal strengths went down additionally. Next, the measurement was speed. So starting in the three foot, we can see that um, the five gigahertz was significantly faster than the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. And as distance increased, they stayed about level. But as a physical obstruction was added, we can see that they both go down the 5 gigahertz more so than the 2.4 gigahertz. And then finally, when more distance increased, we can see the 5 gigahertz frequency band drop significantly while the 2.4 gigahertz remained this, about the same throughout each test. So... Ultimately, the distance had more of an effect on the Wi-Fi signal than the physical obstructions. There was one exception, however, which was the wall ended up impacting the 5 gigahertz frequency more during the signal strength. Um, so basically, the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band was stronger while the 5 gigahertz was faster. Now there's a question of the difference in Wi-Fi performance based on signal strength versus speed. So basically, the stronger signal from the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band will be able to connect through physical obstructions and reach farther distances better than the 5 gigahertz frequency. However, the 5 gigahertz frequency will increase the Wi-Fi speed, which is beneficial when the device is closer to the router. So for students and internet users, they will benefit using a 5 gigahertz frequency when they are closer to the router with less interference. However, if there is more interference or they are farther away from the router, a 2.4 gigahertz frequency band will be more beneficial for optimal Wi-Fi performance. This experiment only took into account the distance, frequency bands, and the 6-inch wall obstruction. To further advance this experiment, um, different types of physical obstructions can be measured. Um, additionally, as I mentioned earlier, there are many different channels within each frequency band that could also affect the Wi-Fi signal. Um, and the strength and speed could also be impacted by how many devices are connected to the Wi-Fi at a time. By taking into account these other impacts, um, the experiment could become more complicated but also more advanced and achieve more in-depth results. 
And here are my references, specifically this scientific journal, The Signal Fuse Learning Method with Dual Bands Wi-Fi Signal Measurements in Indoor Positioning, um, researched similar to my own experiment, and my conclusions reflect the conclusions that were drawn from this journal and this experiment that they did. This experiment was a solely individual project. Thank you for taking the time to watch my presentation. I hope you learned almost as much as I did from this experiment. Um, this research is beneficial to students and internet users, especially during this pandemic as we are still navigating the virtual world, especially with online learning. Thank you.